Okay, hi everybody. Hi, I'm Tim Gillingham with Gold Tip. Uh, this is our virtual ATA series. Um, I was asked to do a seminar for ATA. We all know that ATA is not happening this year due to COVID. So this is going to be a, a little seminar on aero fitment. How do you, you know, for you as a dealer or an individual to kind of, you know, fit your individual needs as, you know, for your customers and for your individual use. You know, my job every day is to, is to, fit people with arrows. Everybody has these questions and we're going to kind of go through some of these questions and at the end there's going to be, you know, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes of uh, question and answer uh, where I'll go over any you know questions that you guys might have and uh, we can answer those uh, individually. I'm always available at Gold Tip. Uh, you can contact me anytime you have any personal questions and you know hopefully we can uh, you know dispel some of the uh, myths in the industry and you know make arrow selection a lot easier for you. Okay, on the, on the board behind me here, I've kind of outlined what we're going to cover. Um, we're going to put a little bit more time into hunting arrows because, frankly, hunting arrows is probably one of the easiest fitments for you as a dealer, but it's also the biggest part of our business. So we'll start kind of at the top, you know, we'll deal with the mid, you know, a mid, a standard diameter shaft, you know, who should shoot these shafts, um, you know, why should a guy go up to a, mid, a medium diameter shaft, why should he go up to a small diameter shaft, and where do those benefits lie? Um, there's kind of some trends running around the industry. I'm sure all you dealers have dealt with this and it's a little bit frustrating. I think it's finally starting to get nipped in the butt a little bit. Um, but they're a little bit of a trend. The guys wanting to shoot super heavy, super heavy FOCs. Um, these have tremendous negative effects in my experience. Um, I think a happy medium approach to arrow setups for hunting works quite well. You know, I am privy to, you know, the animals that I've personally shot uh, with a bow, but but also thousands of other people, whether they're staff shooters or people sending or asking questions, me making recommendations, you know, seeing, you know, how that arrow performed in the field for them. And so, I, you know, I make these uh, assumptions, I guess, or experiences based on, or recommendations based on my experiences. And, you know, I've recommended young girls, you know, going on an elk hunt uh, setup and they come back to me and you know tell me how their their setup performed. I'll be the first guy to tell you I shoot 112 foot pounds a lot of times in my setups. If I hit a deer in the shoulder, there's absolutely no guarantee I'm going through. And so for people to make the claim that you can just build an arrow to you know blow through shoulders and stuff like that, I think that is misinformed and I believe that the goal should be to hit where you're supposed to, which is behind the shoulder, so that you can get penetration well on any animal. That being said, things do happen in the field. Uh, broadhead choice is probably a bigger um, issue if you want to develop a setup that, you know, is going to give you some insurance, say, on a, on a bad hit. You know, shoving a two and a half inch mechanical broadhead through a shoulder is just isn't going to happen. So if you if you want to err on the side of, hey, if I hit a deer in the shoulder, he spins on me, you know, pick a smaller diameter broadhead. You know, maybe you want to go to, you know, 1.75 in a thorn or a sever in a mechanical or a 1.5 rage or... You know, if you really want a great penetrating setup, maybe you go to a Magnus Stinger, okay? But the broadhead selection is much more crucial, in, you know, than the arrow in terms of penetration. So let's get started at the top. Probably the most popular arrow in our lineup is a Gold Tip XT Hunter, the Velocity Hunter. Here we have a black label shaft. Um, these are our mid diameter shafts. They take internal components. That's probably the upside to them. You know, the insert system is by far the strongest. We make a 50 grain insert for it. We also make a hundred for you guys that really wanna, you know, load them up. Um, that being said, when you start loading them arrows up, you really gotta be cognizant of the fact that you are despining the arrow. Um, I did a video series on our Gold Tips YouTube channel. Uh, it's called, uh, it's basically a 11 video series. You wanna, you wanna really look at that because it's gonna give you a, uh, process to determine whether or not what you're doing to that arrow is creating a negative effect, okay? And as you weaken an arrow, what happens really is you start to bring out the differences in the arrows. You know, when you're shooting old aluminum arrows, aluminum actually would handle shooting weak very well. Carbon doesn't do that. Carbon's a lot tougher, but carbon has a, a spine threshold where they all react consistent to each other, and that's what that video series kind of you know, talks a little bit about, especially in the, the dynamic spine tuning portion of it. So, you know, for most whitetail hunters, for guys that just don't have a lot of experience or just want a simple setup, okay? I know a lot of guys that, you know, been in this game and compete year round and that's still their arrow of choice is the Velocity Hunter or the Pro Hunter, you know, or, 
you know, the new uh, dealer only version of the black label shaft. They're very simple. Um, I believe that they're easier to tune when you get into paper tuning and what I call dynamic spine tuning, which is match, you know, spine matching all your arrows through paper. You'll find that the larger diameter shaft is actually more forgiving. Okay. And the reason of that is if I take, you know, the arrow here and I, and the string diameters here, I got a much more forgiving target for the power stroke of the string. If I take a real micro diameter arrow and now I'm striking the arrow here, but the target is this much smaller. Everything has to be in much more perfect alignment, okay, in order for that arrow to all react the same. So the bigger shafts are actually a little bit more forgiving in terms of tunability, uh, just ease of use, I think forgiveness, I think they recover a little bit faster. The downside is, as you get out further in distance, they just simply don't have as good a ballistic coefficient, okay? They slow down faster, they're more affected by the wind and the elements, but I think out to 60, 70, even 80 yards, you really can't beat, um, you know, a Velocity or a Pro Hunter or, you know, something in that diameter that has that internal component. Um, kind of the next step up in, in the, uh, in the uh, selection of arrows, and this has been a very, very popular arrow for us, is the uh, 204 diameter shaft. So in Gold Tips lineup, for example, we've got, we got lightweight offerings, you know, in the black label and the airstrike, and then we've got a heavier weight offering, offering in, the, in the chaos. So if you want a medium diameter shaft that's good out, it's just gonna perform that much better, you know, at distance, you know, 80, 90 yards. It's gonna pack a punch. I shot chaoses a lot when I was shooting 80 pounds, and we have a 200 spine chaos that worked perfect. Now. Keep in mind, I, the only reason I shot the heavier arrow, which I think finished around 550 grain, 15 grains, was for long range wind performance. And I was willing to pull 80 pounds to get that arrow up to speed. Now, speed wise on hunting setups, I think the target for most bow hunters should be a minimum speed of, I think a minimum 280 feet per second. Now, if you go a little bit above or a little below, if you're, if you're a woman or you got a short draw, hey, you might drop that down in the 260 range. But speed helps us in the hunting scenario. In a hunting scenario, I personally believe the number one problem a bow hunter has is the distance from myself to my quarry. Uh, if I'm spotting and stalking, that, that distance is continually changing. So if I make a little mistake, I range that animal, he moves, I'm coming to full draw, he moves a couple yards. I'm gonna be much more likely to hit them with a faster setup. My, me personally, I run as fast as I can run um, and still keep an arrow stiff enough. Uh, this is my hunting arrow here. So I build my arrow for long range precision speed. Um, I keep the point weight only at 120. The broadhead I shoot is 120 grain glue in thorn. It's plenty of FOC. That arrow groups like that at 130 yards. It penetrates the wind well. You know, this is what I call the, you know, kind of performance arrow. Um, but most people want to screw in broadhead just for the ease of, you know, screwing field points on and off and for, uh, you know, switching back and forth from broadheads to field points. And that's where the 204 diameter with our ballistic collar seems to be a very good setup. Um, two options, really. You can go heavy in the shaft. Uh, the insert system is about 40 grains. Or you can, you know, do what we do with the airstrike is we actually lighten the shaft up so that you can now run the same 40 grain insert system, but have a much higher FOC. Or you can add a little bit more, say I wanna go up at a spine size, I wanna go up to the 250 over the 300 so I can load that 100 grain insert in the front. Now you have an arrow that's still light enough to give you good speed, but you got the extra you know, mass weight in front of center that you, know, you want to play with. Um, our fact weight systems on the gold tip line make it real easy to kind of throw a 20 grain weight system in there, see if it benefits or is, is a negative. If it's a negative, it's nice. You can use a weight wrench and pull it back out and just go back to the standard insert system. That makes for a nice, uh, easy setup there. So, you know, in the 204, I think if, for me personally, if I was shooting a screw in broadhead, um, I would probably opt for, and I did that earlier in this year, I shot these black label quantums. Awesome arrow available again, the black label series available only at the dealers. Um, it's pretty similar to the airstrike. Um, we had a lot of shooters do well with the airstrike. Joel Maxfield from Matthews, many of you guys know him. This kind of his arrow of choice. He completed, I think, his Super Slam this year. I know he took a couple sheep and just, man, had a heck of a year shooting this arrow. I got a buddy, uh, uh, Yasti, uh, Perkin Killer out of 
Idaho. He's a short draw length, 27 inch draw, shoots an inch and a half uh, sever broadhead. Um, shot a 380 bull with this, just sent me a picture the other day of a big hog he shot down in Texas, said he went right through the plate. And so a lot of these, uh, you know, penetration experiences that people have, I think are, you know, a lot of times maybe the hit wasn't what they thought it was. Um, a lot of times the broadhead gets blamed, I think, when it's really shot placement. Your better archers don't seem to, to run into these issues as much, in my experience. Um, that being said, hey, I shot a deer in the shoulder this year. I'll be the first to admit it. I made a bad shot, okay? But my ability to follow up, you know, at a longer distance with, with this arrow, you know, sealed the deal on him. So, um, you, know, that's, you know, that's how I build setups. I build them for performance. Um, you know, you can keep it very simple. I mean, I have girls shooting Velocity 600s. In fact, Russ Richardson, his mother and wife, both shoot this Velocity 600 with a, again, going back to broadhead choice, they shoot it with a, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Magnus Stinger, okay? And they're getting full penetration on elk and on, on, on big animals, you know? It's just really shot place, but there's plenty of energy in today's bows, and they're shooting in under 50 pounds, so. Had a girl a couple years ago shot her first bull elk with a bow, 40, I think she said it was 43 yards, and she got a complete pass through with that Magnus Stinger on a, on a 600 or a 500 ultralight. So, you know, arrow weight, you know, it's a big controversy subject. Uh, you know, there's arrows out there that allow you to do everything, but you gotta have a method to your madness. You know, watch that dynamic spine tuning video. The most important thing is that when you get done at the end of the day, is that all your arrows shoot exactly the same okay if i have four arrows through paper and one of them is shooting a bullet hole the next one's shooting i guess i should switch that to four fletch since i'm a huge four fletch fan okay and let's say one of them is actually shooting this way let's say one of them is actually oh maybe it gives you a little bit of a high tear okay the one thing you have to understand with a broadhead on the front of an arrow is the broadhead is a canard wing, okay? A canard wing is a steering surface, okay? And you take a fighter jet, they have these short, stable wings, and so when they want to turn, they use those wings to, to make that turn. Well, a broadhead is no different. When it, when it starts out sideways, if it starts out coming out of the bow high, it's going to steer low, and your broadhead's going to hit clear down here. And so it's very important that you, you, you get all your arrows to shoot exactly the same and as you get too weak and as you get really weak and as you actually you know you're going to see that those variances are going to show up a lot more when you start getting down to the micro diameter arrows you're going to find that it's they're a lot more sensitive to tuning they make it up down range because they don't have the steering surface if they do get sideways they don't have the planing surface now you put a big fixed blade on the front of it you're still going to have some of those same issues um it's the reason mechanical broadheads are so much more accurate than fixed blade broadheads is because they have lower stir, you know, you know, steering surface area. So when you make a mistake and you're up there and you're shaking around hunting and that elk's coming in on you and you're not making that perfect backyard shot anymore, that's where you need forgiveness. Forgiveness comes in the terms of, you know, four fletch, like our factory four fletch pattern here I found years ago that um, those types of patterns work a lot better. Now, if you're shooting good, you might not be able to tell the difference between that blazer vein and that four fletch. But the key is, is where do my bad shots hit? How far out do my bad shots hit? And so I think if you'll, your average guy, especially your average bow hunter, will try four fletch patterns on their hunting arrows, I think they're going to find that they're, they're going to be a lot more forgiving and a lot more accurate. So um, moving on to the micro diameter shafts, um, very popular shafts. I mean, the uh, the downside of a micro diameter shaft honestly is the insert system okay the whole broadhead has to sit out in front of the arrow so gold tips insert system is a if i can get this thing apart but it's a two-part insert system so basically it's sleeving over the end of the shaft so the only thing hold, you know structurally holding that to the end of the shaft is is the material and then the cap over on the end of the carbon not as strong as this insert system and definitely not as strong as this insert system that fits all the way inside the shaft okay um, that being said it's still a very good system um, that is just the downside then you have to learn how to 
you know, go through the process of spin tuning your inserts. You gotta do some not, you know, some rotation on your inserts when you put them together. There's uh, a video I do called Building the Pierce Target Arrow. I kind of explain some of the, those procedures to you. And uh, if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend it because it's gonna help you learn how to spin to these inserts. Um, I have built these with deep six. I mean, especially for women, you know, when I build a 500 spine arrow, I've put a deep six insert in there and I take the knot collar here because the downside of a deep six or say a hit insert is that the end of the shaft always gets damaged, okay? So if you'll take a knot collar like we put on the point end or the knock end and put it on the point end like I do on my hunting arrow, I do the same thing here to kind of reinforce this on this glue-in broadhead. Um, you can get some of the deep six broadheads like Wasp. Uh, I'm sure there's some other ones on the market um, that work quite well in, in the 166 diameter shafts if, you know, if the only hang up that you have for shooting it you know, is that you don't like the, this particular insert system. Um, there are some heavier duty insert systems available, but then now you're talking 100 grains in the front of the arrow. And if you're gonna do that, uh, add another 100 grains and have 200 grains in the front of that arrow, you're gonna have to go up at least one spine size, if not two spine sizes. Then we start really attacking this speed. Um, another issue is, is that, you know, you can only draw it up to right here, right? So now I have this much arrow with a long broadhead sticking out in front of my rest. So your overall projectile length is a lot longer, which also has a bigger despining effect. So all those considerations need to come into play uh, you know, when you're choosing an arrow, you know, for bow hunting, they'll all kill animals. You know, you can kill animals with virtually anything, okay? Uh, you know, I can set up any arrow here. In fact, you know, I, one year I hunted with an X cutter. You know, and I wouldn't uh, hesitate to recommend that to, it's probably one of the best fixed blade shooting arrows that I've ever shot. In fact, the biggest whitetail buck I ever killed, I shot with an X cutter. Um, it's a very light shaft at 7.8 grains an inch. We make inserts for it and uh, extremely stable with broadheads. So, you know, an arrow is just a, is a broadhead delivery system. Um, there's lots of different ways to configure it. Uh, fixed blade broadheads require bigger veins, which require more noise. I think a lot of times the animal jumps the sound of the arrow coming at them. Um, and we've had this conversation with a lot of guys, but where I initially learned that was from a guy named Steve Cobreen. Steve Cobreen, if many of you don't know him, uh, has probably killed more SCI world records than anybody in history. I probably killed 60 species with a bow that nobody else has. He uh, was from South Africa, but he did a test one time, he said on, on Impala, and Impala are very jumpy animals, much like, you know, coos deer in Arizona or, or Mexico. And he, he said, I, I, he set the camera up at the, at the Impala and then he put a target behind the blind and a target past the animal. And he said, the difference between shooting at the animal or shooting at a target behind the blind was absolutely remarkable. And he's convinced that they were jumping the sound of the arrow coming at him. And I think if a lot of you would video your animals, you know, and, and look back and see what is, what are they actually jumping? They're probably jumping that progressively, you know, that sound that's, progressively getting louder coming towards them. They're kind of just wired to move away from that. And so one of the, one of the reasons I run this small profile SL vein and this broadhead is for that reason. I can, I can quiet up my arrow. I can't put too small a vein if I run a big broadhead. So it's kind of got to work together. So it's one of the reasons that I run the setup that I do is to try to get that noise level down and to uh, try to create a very, very accurate long range arrow that's not gonna lose its velocity. Um, you know, that's pretty much it in a nutshell on as far as hunting arrows go. You know, if, if, if a lot of you guys are getting, you know, we do, like I said, we do have in the gold tip line, we do have a lot of heavy inserts and things like that if you wanna try them. I, I'd recommend, you know, letting guys try the fact weight system that runs into the back of the insert. Uh, that way they can, you know, try the extra weight, but you know, you got to figure, you know, you're going to lose about one foot per second for every three to four grains of arrow weight that, you know, that you're going to put out there. So, you know, a, a happy medium is, you know, the biggest, you know, and the best approach to that. So that pretty much covers, uh, you know, the hunting lineup, say in gold tip, but it's pretty similar in most of the other arrow lineups and arrow companies. Um, you know, it, it's, it's always a trade-off of speed versus weight. If you don't want to pull the speed, if you don't want to pull the weight to get the weight up to speed, then you, maybe you got to consider a, 
you know, a lighter arrow with a different broadhead combination. So pick broadheads that, that penetrate well, that, you know, that don't have, you know, trying to shove an ax through an animal, you know, you can't shoot a, a two, two and a half inch rage. Although I have seen friends of mine shoot 2.3 kill zones on a 340 grain arrow and blow right through elk with them. So uh, watch my buddy Sean Greathouse shoot a Alaska Yukon moose last year with a velocity, weighed 400 grains, shot a Grim Reaper mechanical. Complete pass through on one arrow. The other arrow I think was a quarter two and it was all the way inside the body cavity. So I mean, you really can't ask for better penetration than that. You know, a lot of the other claims in the market are just hyperbole and you know, it's, uh, you know, you want to pick the setup that you're the most accurate with. Okay, so now that we've covered hunting arrows, let's go on to target arrows. Uh, a lot of dealers uh, don't really stock target arrows. They don't know where to, you know, they don't know how, they don't have the expertise to fit people that well. I mean, there's exceptions, of course, to every rule, but uh, the goal here is to educate the end consumer, but also to educate the dealers on, you know, what to carry, what's the best thing to fit your customers, you know, with, and give you some ammo to kind of, you know, go at them with. So let's start with indoor, okay? And we're in indoor season right now. A lot of the term has been shut down, but that being said, we still got a lot of indoor going on. Now, there's two basic indoor formats. Um, the NFAA Vegas round formats, the max diameter shaft that you can shoot is a 421, which will be the gold tip triple X. Um, FIDA, on the other hand, S3DA, um, some of the uh, college programs and stuff where they're limited to a 9.3 diameter, you want to, you know, max out with uh, the max diameter. The idea indoors at 20 yards is to shoot the max diameter possible so that we can catch lines, okay? Um, if you can make, you know, this arrow shoot equally as good as this arrow, then why wouldn't you shoot this arrow? It's going to bandage your score a little bit, and uh, that's typically what people do. Now, a lot of people think that I can't shoot this triple X. It's got a 100 spine. It's too stiff. All the spine charts say it's too stiff. Well, I don't believe that too stiff exists, you know, when you're dealing with a release shot bow. When you shoot a release, you're basically just, it's being held with a loop. There's no oscillation on the string coming out unless that bow is poorly tuned. And if the bow is poorly tuned, then we need to fix the problem at the root, which is the bow tuning. You know, your forgiveness is going to come from your fletching patterns primarily and then your point weight um, and speed too. So don't, don't forget about speed. When we're dealing with uh, different archers, we got to kind of fit them differently. Um, Kyle Douglas, uh, many of you know, is, you know, probably our number one indoor shooter right now. We've got a lot of good indoor shooters. Uh, Jason Goykin won the Vegas shoot last year in the amateur. Shot a 30X's last day. Doesn't really get any better than that. There's lots of good shooters, you know, that you know, are shooting our arrows all across the country. But Kyle won uh, uh, Vegas last year with the Triple X, and he also won Indoor Nationals, and then he won the FIDA Indoor Nationals with the 9.3, which is a 250 spine. Well, Kyle's like a 28 inch draw. He shoots these arrows at 25 inches long, 25, 25 and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood, but really stiff. And so that kind of disproves right there that, uh, you know, an arrow can be too stiff. I mean, there's no way a guy can compete at that level in that type of pressure if he doesn't have a forgiving setup. Now, my typical recommendation for indoor setups is to cut the arrow to the rest and then play with your fletching patterns and your point weight to get forgiveness, okay? That being said, you wanna start. My four steps of tuning are this, okay? Um, let's just gotta wipe all this down. My four steps of tuning are this. First, powder, okay? When you're tuning something, you got to make sure you have clearance. Just because you're not seeing a vein mark somewhere doesn't mean you have clearance. And when you're bumping that big stiff arrow around, big diameter especially, because this big diameter arrow acts a lot like a fixed blade broadhead. When it gets sideways, it has a larger surface area so it can plane off. And what the point weight does, when you have heavier point weight in there, it resists that planing when it does get sideways. So first step is to, to powder everything for clearance, okay? Just because you have a drop away rest does not mean you have clearance. Spray foot powder is what I use. I mean, I've got a case of it here. You know, this is probably the best stuff, this, this, uh, this blue gold bond. It sticks really good and uh, 
you know, the Walmart version or Walgreens version actually I think is a little bit better than the, the actual gold bond itself. So second step is to paper tune, okay? Okay, paper tuning tells you what the arrow is doing, okay? It may not be cool for you guys that want to bear shaft tune and so on and so forth, but bear shaft tuning and paper tuning are one and the same. If I have a perfect bullet hole at five yards, my bear shaft is going to hit right with that. As long as I've added the weight of the veins. So if I take these four veins here and they're seven grains a piece, I got 28 grains on the back of that shaft. Now, when I pair shaft tune, and I might, I do it some, or I'll carry a bear shaft with me, understanding that if I don't have paper, I can use the bear shaft to get the same results because I know that the bear shaft and the paper tune bow will react exactly the same. But if I don't add the weight of the, of the fletching to the back of the arrow, those two are not necessarily the same, okay? So just keep that in mind. You can tune either way, but paper is by far the best. I do it at five yards. And I do it because that's about the point where the arrow starts to recover, okay? And then number three, and you'll see this in that tuning video series, is to paper tune each arrow, okay? Okay, this is especially critical with your heavy hunting arrows when you're, when you're loading them points up. But when we start loading the points up, you know, on some of these other target arrows, you're going to start to see some variance too. Now, I probably see the worst at my draw length. I, I deal with a lot of other shooters and it's just amazing to me how easy their bows are to tune. And then at the fourth, we can either, you know, you know, bear shaft tune to check it. Or we broadhead tune with a, you know, with a, with a hunting setup. Okay. You know, if you just follow that procedure every time, you, you're not going to make any mistakes. The problem is most people jump straight to here. And, and uh, let me just rephrase this. When you paper tune, you don't want to do it with one arrow either, because if you problem, you know, tune to a problem child, you know, then you're going to be chasing your tail. So I always use four arrows, you know, when I do my initial paper tune. Okay, so I'll do an arrow here, arrow here, arrow here, arrow here, and then I'll rotate it, rotate it, and rotate it. So when I get done, I have 16 tears on those four arrows. Okay. Then I'll go through them and I'll say, well, this one reacted exactly the same here, 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 and here. So I'll rotate the knocks all to right there. And then I'll start tuning the rest of the arrows to that. Okay. That's a process. That's a process that's going to keep you from having mistakes and, you know, having a customer come back and say, well, hey, that arrow's too stiff. I can't shoot it. When simply the biggest pr the problem was he just had a little clearance issue. Okay. Um, who can shoot a triple X? My recommendation is typically anybody that can get it over a couple hundred foot a second, really. Um, when you start dealing with uh, lower poundages, um, women in general, I, I have women shooting this, but I normally will start them with the 120 grain point, okay? And then add weight from there, okay? My typical recommendation for most adults is cut them to the rest. You want them on a large fletching pattern. If you're shooting low poundage or you have a speed problem, let's run feathers over veins because feathers versus veins in a large diameter or a large you know profile vein you're looking at about 10 foot a second difference at least okay so for somebody that's you know already speed challenged you know putting a big heavy vein on the back of her isn't going to help anything for them you know a guy like me where i got speed to burn who cares i just you know i run as big a vein as you know i can and still achieve clearance okay um, high profile is kind of the, the, the rule of the day. You know, this is a two inch HP, or I mean, not a two inch HP, but a Raptor vein from Q2i. I like that a lot. That's my go-to on the triple X for 3D shooting. Um, for indoor, I go a little bit bigger, three, sometimes even four inch. Um, but cut to the rest, start with the 150 grain point. Most people, if you want just to start in the happy medium, most of our top shooters are running about 200 grains in the front of that arrow. So a 150 grain point, with a, with a 50 grain weight screw. Um, I tell people that they need to try 150, 200, and 250, okay? And what you're gonna see is, based on your shot, you know, if you're a guy that followed through really, really well, you're, you're not gonna be as penalized by a slower arrow as a guy that, uh, you know, might move around a lot, and, and like me, and I trigger the shot, and I want an arrow, and I got a longer draw length too, so it takes longer for my arrow to clear, so I benefit more from a faster setup that gets out of the bow, okay? And you're not going to know that. I can't just carte blanche say this is good for you and you and you 
the, you use our FAC weight system to go in and, you know, shoot 150 grain points for uh, three or four days. Don't, don't make a knee jerk reaction off of one day of shooting. You may be shooting bad that day. You may be shooting good that day. Um, the difference in a forgiving setup is how far out do my bad shots hit, okay? When I'm dealing with women, I, I tend to keep the vein down like this. I'll start with 120 grain points. We'll even cut them tight to the rest and then, you know, add that 50 grain weight uh, to the back of the point. And if it gets worse, then I might only add 20. So I can go, you know, 120, 170, and then back it off maybe to 140. I've had girls shoot this shaft 23 inches long with 100 grains in it and just sit there and absolutely knock the center out of the baby X. Um, you know, another good choice for women indoors is the X cutter. Um, if you've got, you know, girls and stuff in, the, in your kids' uh, indoor programs like uh, S3DA, the 22 is a little bit lighter than, say, the, the 9.3. So they may want to, uh, you know, opt for a 22 over a 9.3. 9.3 is 8.3 grains an inch and you're 7.3 here. So you're looking at about 8 or 10 foot a second difference just in those two things, you know, those two different arrows. I don't know that that's a huge deal killer. I, I would tend to kind of lean towards pushing the max diameter allowed for indoor competition and then play with your point weight and your fletching to kind of keep the speed up. Um, feathers, I think, recover very quickly because there's less weight on the back of the shaft and less inertia. Um, but that's pretty much it for indoor. You just got to play around with, you know, your forgiveness aspects, you know, your launcher angles on your bows. Um, make sure you got clearance because that's a really a big one. I, I prefer a Hamsky drop away. Um, again, Kyle, that's what he shoots. Uh, lots of our shooters shoot him. You find that arrow is becoming, that rest is becoming more and more popular, you know, by the day because it allows you to put, you know, a forgiving launcher blade on a drop away system, gives you maximum amount of guidance, but then gets that arrow, you know, gets that arrow rest out of the way when that arrow reverses its paradox and comes back down into the rest. And that can cause a lot of forgiveness issues. So, that pretty much covers indoor. I don't see any reason to shoot a 30X or, you know, an X cutter for anybody else. I do have a few shooters that just prefer the speed. I think the forgiveness that they see is in the speed of an X cutter, say, versus a, a triple X. So, um, you know, don't, don't overlook speed as a forgiveness factor. You know, fletching, I think, is number one in terms of forgiveness. Number two is point weight. And number three is, you know, the speed of the projectile and how fast it clears you know, the bow setup. In, in the rifle and pistol world, they call it uh, lock time, barrel lock time. So how long it takes from the time you pull the trigger till the, you know, the primers hit and the bullets out the barrel. So let's move on to 3D arrows. 3D is a subject, you know, everybody calls me up and they want to know what's the perfect 3D arrow. Well, I don't know. You know, you got to answer some questions with that first, okay? And your customers and, and you as, you know, when you're fitting yourself personally, you have to ask the same questions first. Is it ASA? Is it IBO? Is it World Archery? You know, are we shooting known? Are we shooting unknown yardage? Two different animals, okay? Okay? ASA and, in ASA we have known and unknown, okay? If I'm shooting known yardage, which is the majority of ASA now, my, my typical goal is I wanna shoot as fat a shaft as possible with a minimum speed of 270 feet per second, okay? That's my rule, okay? Because I still think that 270 gives you that faster lock time out of the bow. If you're a real short draw length or, or it's a woman and your only max distance is 35 or 40 yards, you know, you, may, you might drop that down to 260. When I shot known, I shot 270 to 275. I shot a triple X with a 200 grain point. Super forgiving. Okay, so I opt for a little bit more point weight in shooting known yardage. And it really doesn't matter whether you shoot a triple X, a 30X, an X cutter, or a 22. You pick the arrow size based on what your bow will do. So first of all, we need to know is how fast will your bow shoot a particular weight arrow, okay? B very, very, uh, you know, in the, in the unknown portion, it's a speed game, right? So if I'm allowed 295 foot a second, I'm gonna shoot the arrow weight. I want a big arrows I can shoot with a reasonable point weight. My idea of a reasonable point weight is a minimum of 80 in a 22, 100 in an X cutter, and 120 in a triple and a 30X, okay? 
So that's your 22 X cutter, and this is your triple X and 30 X, okay? That's the minimum. If you can run more over here on the known side, I'm gonna be running a lot more point weight because I've got 295 to 270 there. I got 25 foot a second. That's 75 grains of arrow weight I can run, you know, on the, with the same arrow because I don't really have as much need for the speed because I know exactly how far it is, right? Okay? So that's pretty much it in a nutshell for ASA, okay? Some of the kids that are in S3DA, they're limited to 9.3 diameter shafts, so you apply the same logic there. 9.3s or 22s are probably the best arrows for S3DA. Um, again, it might be hard for a, for a young kid to, to get a 9.3 up to speed, but some, a lot of times the kids only have 240 foot a second speed limit. So you gotta, you gotta know what your speed limit is and then maximize the diameter with a decent point weight at that speed limit, okay? So let's just wipe that out of there. Now let's move to IBO, okay? So the IBO rules are pretty simple, okay? Speed rules, okay? It's five grains per pound. And what that means is if I shoot a 70 pound bow, I could shoot a 350 grain arrow, or I can shoot 280 foot a second by going under five grains per pound. If you're, if you're women, you have to choose though what you're gonna do. So when they test you for speed, you have to choose what you're gonna do. So if you know you're never gonna get 280 or, two, or 290, you might as well stop at that 285 threshold and you know shoot as big an arrow as you can there. Um, so basically, if you're gonna shoot a 60 pound bow, your arrow is gonna be somewhere around 300 grains. Keep in mind for every three grains of arrow weight, in most 3D arrows, you're gonna get one foot per second, okay? So you can kind of work back and forth that way. For every pound, it's about the same. For every pound, we get um, about, uh, I can't remember, it's about two, to th somewhere around two to three feet per second. So, we, you know, you either gotta pull the poundage or you gotta get the arrow weight down. Now I've shot, I've shot, I won IBO World one year with a triple X with a 50 grain point. Now I don't know that I would recommend that. It's a sensitive setup, I kinda box myself in, but you know, I shot a record that tournament, you know. I, I didn't shoot a single 10 and 50 target, or a single eight and 50 targets. So it's got me thinking about maybe revisiting that, but I don't tend to recommend those real niche setups. Um, like again, minimum 80 grain in a 22 is a really good setup for you, for a shooter that's in that 60 pound range or you're a long draw guy like me, there's no way I can get a bigger arrow. You know, if I only want to pull 65 pounds, there's no way that I can get an X cutter even with the overdrive shoot, there's no way I can get this down to 350 grains or 325 grains, which is required to get five grains per pound. Now the new rules in the pro classes, so if we go ASA in the pro classes, it's now it's a speed limit of 300 feet per second, okay? So I think we can go up to like 309. So now you, again, it's kind of like back to ASA, you pick the arrow but that only applies to the pros. So you really gotta know the rules for the class. The rest of the IBO is five grains per pound. So for a lot of women, they're gonna shoot an arrow like a Velocity or an Ultralight uh, in a five and a 600 spine. Uh, a lot of you know, older guys that don't wanna pull 50, 60 pounds, the Ultralight's a great you know, arrow for IBO. The IBO scores center out, so it's not as critical to shoot as large a diameter shafts because you're not trying to catch lines as much. The 12s are a little bit bigger. Um, most guys around 22s and X cutters, by far your most popular uh, ASA arrows. And if you're a dealer stocking arrows, um, I encourage you to watch a video I did on, on Gold Tip's YouTube channel called uh, Building More Accurate Arrows. I show you how to take a, a 0025 shaft and make it as good as a pro grade shaft. Usually you can bump them up out of grade based on how you cut them and how long the end consumer is gonna use the shaft. So, that's IBO. Now, in, for our, our shooters across the pond here, they have a whole different type of 3D, okay? World Archery, okay? So World Archery, in their infinite wisdom, decided to make their own set of rules. So these guys, they have to shoot, um, I don't believe there's any speed limit, but they have to shoot two arrows per target, okay? 
That in itself is a limiting factor right there. So I got to stick two arrows on a target and I got multiple guys on the group. I probably don't want to go above a, above a 22. They're also limited to 60 pounds. Okay, so now you're looking at ultralights, you know, smaller diameter ultralights because I can fit a couple of them in them kill zones. They're fast, they're flat. We build them in a, you know, in a, a, six, a 700, a 600, a 500, a 400. Uh, but once you get up to the 400, they weigh the same as the 22. So if you're going to shoot a 400 spine, you might as well shoot the 22, unless you're worried about kiss outs. Okay. So again, the idea behind uh, World Archery 3D is you want to you want to shoot. Again, I, I say the minimum point weight on a 22, 80 grains. You World Archery guys, this arrow shoots phenomenally well with an 80 grain point. I've shot it and won many a tournament with it. Um, lots of our shooters have, okay? Yeah, maybe you want another 20 grains if you can get it, but that's going to bump your speed down. And I think, you know, unmarked 3D, like World Archery, is primarily a vertical game. And it's a guessing game, so a little more speed is going to help you in that situation. So that pretty much covers our 3D arrows. Um, let's go into field and, and feed of arrows real quick. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. I think the very best arrow for field and feeda when you're shooting long range is a micro diameter shaft. Um, the Pierce Tours, the Pierce Platinums, or you can even build, you know, Pierce Hunters up into them. You know, we have components for all of them. We build that in a 600, 700, 800, or I mean a 600, a, a 700, a 600, a 500, a 400, a 300, and a 250. So, you know, arrows to fit the spectrum. Now, I do have a lot of shooters that prefer like we talked in the hunting part, part of things, they feel like they shoot this ultralight better because it's more forgiving than they do the micro diameter arrows. And, and sometimes I kind of would have to tend to agree with them. You know, I've actually shot the airstrike uh, for tournament use. Um, the coating on it doesn't hold up quite as well, you know, it's you know, with that repetitive, you know, shooting into abrasive targets. But uh, this, uh, this Pierce uh, arrow is just phenomenal. Uh, I've done a lot of, I won the national FIDA with it in, in senior this year and won uh, a couple of the FIDA events, uh, Reading, uh, lots of different events with this, uh, this round yanked in the field nationals. It's a phenomenal arrow, it's a durable arrow, and the reason we want to shoot small diameter for field and, you know, and FIDA is because we're shooting in the wind. The primary challenge in FIDA is the wind. Uh, most guys are running somewhere the average adult man is probably running between a 400 and a 300 spined arrow, 140 grain points. Uh, Kyle Douglas, again, back to him, uh, shoots a 340 spined arrow, 25 and a half inches long, 140 grain points. The 140 grain point is what's going to really, you know, it's going to make that arrow kind of react like a rock on a string. So if it gets kicked sideways by the wind, the point's still going to track, okay, until it recovers. The lighter you go, if you're going down to women, where we go down to these little 700 spine uh, Pierce Tours, if say you got kids that are 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, or women that have just real short draw lengths, you know, cut these arrows short and get the weight up in the point where they're actually going to do some good. Um, you know, fletching options, I'm, I'm a four fletch guy. I might tend to, you know, you look here, this is a little 1.5 Q2i. That's actually what I put on my feet arrows in a 340. I kind of keep the drag effect down. I'm just trying to keep that arrow velocity up at distance. And especially when I'm going to like Redding where, you know, we're shooting out to a hundred yards, that's where, you know, that little bit of extra smaller diameter is going to benefit. If I take this arrow in a, in a velocity or an ultralight versus this arrow at a hundred, they might keep up with each other really good at 70, 75, 80 yards. You know, if I run a heavy point in the, in the ultralight, but once you get out past that, there's just nothing beats the small diameter you know, of the Pierce uh, uh, platform. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of, the, again, it's the same in, in most other arrow manufacturers in, in, in their platforms. Uh, but, you know, we can answer questions at the end if you've got any specific questions, you know, as far as, you know, most of the configurations I tell guys to use is a mini HD pin knock with a pin knock bushing and then use the knock collar, okay? If you'll use the knock collar with the pin bushing, I can honestly look in the camera and tell you I have never broke the back out of one of our arrows with that system in it. 
I'll bend pins, I'll ding pins, but in like five years, I have never broke the back out of an arrow. So it's a very good insurance policy, even on your hunting arrows. If you want to add that to your, uh, your Pierce Platinums, um, you can add the pin bushing. They make great hunting arrows. You know, the threshold I think is around 70, 75 pounds with that knock where you're going to want to, you know, stick to the GTO knock. But, uh, you know, all our component systems across the gold tip line are, are, are quite good. Um, we have base points with the, uh, the Pierce arrows for, for field. I would recommend, and they have the same small fact weight systems that you can use, but typically women in the five and, or the six and seven hundreds, I would start them with hundred grain points. Um, as they move up to the 500s, I think I'd go 120. And, you know, 400 and up, I think I would try to stick to the 100 and, 120 to 140 grain points. And I think you're going to find that that's a really good setup. Um, you're going to find that these micro diameter arrows are a little trickier to tune. you got to follow that dynamic spine tuning, you know, where we went through matching all those arrows through paper. And then you're going to find a set of arrows that are just phenomenally accurate and going to, you know, stand up to a lot of abuse. Okay, guys, real quick, we're kind of running out of time here and we need to get to the question and answer section of this. Um, I could talk for hours on arrows and, and application and, and perfection, but you know, I've, got, I've done this stuff for 35 years and got it down to a science. So you know, feel free to reach out to me. We're gonna cover our crossbow bolts real quick. Uh, crossbows are you know, gaining in popularity, love them, hate them, whatever you wanna do with them. I've spent a lot of time shooting them. The same stuff applies. Exactly what we just talked about applies. And you'll find a lot of your crossbow customers are going to come in and they're going to complain, well, this arrow hits here on the bullseye. This arrow hits here. This arrow hits here. Well, there's a reason, okay? Most of the time, the problem is the arrows are too weak. So um, this arrow here is probably simply reacting here like that. So it's going to steer the broadhead the opposite direction. Uh, this one here is probably shooting a bullet hole. And this one here is shooting a low tear, okay? That is something that I've found, and actually we're working on a, you know, a solution for a stiffer bolt you know, in our lineup. Uh, played around, built some prototypes. This, but I want to kind of give you a recommendation in the gold tip lineup as to how to you know, fit bolts. Everybody's kind of attracted in that, that world to speed, 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 and more speed. Well, when you start throwing 400 foot a second downrange, that energy's got to go somewhere, and that arrow's got to be stiff enough to handle it. Um, and in my experience, a lot of the crossbows deliver too much energy. And until the industry comes up with a standard that says, you know, my bow shoots a 400 grain bolt at this speed, it's going to be very hard for manufacturers to fit people across the board. Now, in the gold tip lineup, we've, we've come up with, if you look at our charts, we've come up with kind of a fitment, you know, on our crossbow bolts that explains, you know, where they should be kind of shot and uh the swift the swift is the first crossbow bolt we ever had out it's a lightweight bolt i'd highly recommend it in you know 150 pound and lower uh recurve crossbows um, old parker bows that are you know a little bit uh you know lower performance round wheels most people in the gold tip liner could want to go with the ballistic or ballistic pro and we have a nitro bolt. These are both about the same stiffness, but the nitro is a little bit heavier. So if you're shooting fixed blades, you want to tune it down a little bit. Um, you want to go with the, uh, the nitro bolt. Um, again, this knock rotating and stuff is going to be over critical in order to get maximum results, you know, out of a crossbow. There's just a huge energy jump in crossbows and crossbows are really difficult to tune compared to a compound. And so, you know, you want all your arrows reacting the same. You know, a couple things that I've done, you know, if you want to, you've got a guy that just got a real high energy crossbow and you, and you just realize through these paper tests that, you know, it's just too weak. What you can do that's, you know, I, I take a lot of times, I'll take a, a Velocity and a Hunter and a 340 and I'll cut a, a 32, 30, 32 inch shaft in three sections and I'll sleeve a 10 inch section up in the in the front of this 425 ballistic and you'll see it instantly stiffen up um, that's going to give you a, you know better foc too but it's also going to stiffen that bolt up quite a bit and i think there's actually some guys out there in the marketplace that are doing that you know in terms of custom bolts but you can do that also with epoxy um, but we are working on, a, on another bolt too to try to you know to uh, 
you know, address, you know, some of those issues and, and the prototypes that I've built already that some of my guys have done real well. In fact, one of our guys, you know, shot him in competition last year and, and done quite well, won Vegas with them. Um, everybody I've given them to says they're getting just phenomenal results with them. So, but the ballistic is tends to be the best all around crossbow bolt for guys that want a little speed. Uh, you can also run our aluminum inserts. The 22 series components fit this. So if you want to run aluminum inserts with, uh, uh, back weight systems to kind of, you know, build your speed up that way. I mean, you can get aluminum inserts or brass 60 grain inserts for the nitro bolt too. Uh, so if you want to, you know, by taking weight out of the front, that definitely, you know, uh, stiffens that arrow up quite a bit. And again, there's no difference in, in how you treat crossbow bolts versus how you treat arrows. Exactly the same. Okay. If you look at all of my arrows, when I get done with them, I've always got a spine mark on the top. This is where I've shot them in through paper, rotated the knock, and I know they all react exactly the same. Now this arrow, I shoot 75 pounds, 33 and a half inch draw length. This arrow is ridiculously weak, okay? For me out of my compound and my hunting bow. But they group phenomenally well because I take the time to, to rotate the knocks in through and get them as good as I can, and I shoot a very low profile broadhead. I would highly recommend, um, to try to find broadheads for your crossbow clientele that is the lowest profile flying that you can. There's some really good ones out there. A uh, foreign builds a very, very good one. I mean, this is what you get. You know, you practice with it like this and it deploys like that. So, and then when, when, it, when it kills, it's like that. So it's a phenomenally good uh, broadhead. So even if you are getting some variation, those are gonna group a lot better. Uh, concentricity is also extremely important. The faster you move a projectile, whether it's my IBO setup or moving a crossbow bolt at 350 foot a second, the components have to be very concentric. So, you know, go on our YouTube channel. I do a video on broadhead alignment. Um, watch that video, learn that technique on how to spin tune broadheads, and it's going to save you a lot of grief when you get out in the field. So, even field points, I found that if you don't have the field points perfectly concentric at that kind of speed, it is actually, it's very difficult to shoot the same arrow in the same hole. So when we're dealing with crossbows, we, we first want to identify if we're having problems, does that, does, does one bolt shoot over and over in the same hole? If it does, then we know the bow is repeatable. And then we want to, you know, compare the other bolts to it. Okay. And the amount of variation you see, you know, if we put up, you know, four targets and they're all hitting dead center or in the same place or, you know, they all hit high right, then we know the bolts are stiff enough. If we're getting a lot of variation, then we know the bolts are too weak and we got to try to work on a way of stiffening them up or, or go to a, a little bit stiffer bolt. So um, I hope that helps you understand uh, bolts are really complex. A lot of the manufacturers are putting knock butts and stuff on them that they're only they're trying to control the bolt business for their particular crossbow. And so it doesn't leave you as the end consumer a lot of options. Um, but feel free to give me a call anytime and I can, I can work through some innovative options for you. Uh, Fire Knock does build some really good knocks that you can use in a lot of different uh, applications that work with uh, you know, some of the Ravens and things like that. So, but those, those really high performance crossbows definitely take a stiffer bolt and we got to do things to stiffen those bolts up. So let's go uh, finish this up right now and we'll go to the uh, question and action or question and answer section of this particular seminar. And uh, I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, if you have any uh, seminar topics you'd like me to teach in the future, uh, just ask and I'll, I'll try to, you know, get a video done on it. We got a lot of videos that uh, we're shooting here with Gold Tip to try to help you understand arrows and, and stabilization on the bee stinger side. And, uh, you know, just try to help you understand, you know, what it is that, you know, I've learned in my 35 years, you know, of, of shooting a bow and arrow. So have a good one guys. And I look forward to answering some of your questions.